Hi and welcome back. Today I'm going to be painting this beautiful scene inspired by the methods of the, the late great Ron Ranson. Um, it's from my photograph which is included as an extra for Patreon. Um, so if you're interested in that please follow the link below. Um, I should be painting loose, mostly using the Harky brush um, and a flat brush, a calligraphy brush, um, and I think that's probably about it, uh, perhaps two Harky brushes, um, an extra large and a small. Um, they are made by Pro Art. They are the Ron Ranson branded brushes and are considered by most people to be very good for landscape painting as they are very versatile and they come to a nice chisel edge which means that you can um, get all kinds of different effects with them from very large washes to quite fine details. I'm using Saunders Waterford cold pressed paper. It's taped to my board with ordinary decorator's masking tape and my board's at an angle of about 45 degrees. Um, Ron Ranson usually clipped his paper to his board um, and stretched the clips as he went or painted with a block. Um, this is my interpretation and I actually like very much with quarter imperial sized paper to just tape it onto the board and yes it buckles as I paint but then as it dries it flattens out completely. I'm using a large um, carpenter's pencil, pencil that I bought from a, a DIY shop. Um, it's, got, it's the same as using a big brush, it keeps you nice and loose. So using a big pencil means that your drawing becomes nice and loose. You just put in the main lines like the horizon line, the line of the river um, because this is the River Cookmere um, in East Sussex, one of my favourite places to go and paint and sketch. Now I've wet the paper all over using the extra large um, Harky brush and this is a little bit of raw sienna um, across the distant hills and also just very pale amount in the sky to take away from the white of the paper. I think Ron Ranson used to call raw sienna the great unifier because it really brings a painting together if you use it underneath. Now this is cobalt blue and I'm using this instead of ultramarine blue because I like this cobalt blue. It's um, one of my own homemade paints because um, one thing I do like to do is make my own paint and this cobalt blue is one, one of those um, and I really like the way it works in skies to give this really rich but subtle summary effect. So I'm using the large brush to scrub the paint across the page, um, slightly darker in some places than others, so I get a nice variety to my sky. Painting it wet in wet like this means it should soften back. Now taking a clean, damp, small Harky brush, just cleaning up across the top of the hills where I penciled them in um, just to keep that sort of slight distinction between the hills and the sky. And then using my brush clean and damp to just feather out the paint so it becomes paler down towards the horizon and then quickly brushing in a bit of dry brush across the river so I then get some sparkle on the water and the textures of the water are started off nicely for me with the light sort of reflecting on the river. And then I'll go back to the small Harky brush and using um, just various pale mixtures of the cobalt blue and the raw sienna, I'll add a little bit of texture, um, horizontal brush strokes into the foreground water so I can begin to establish my river bank. Pulling a little bit of paint across the rest of the river. I just want a bit of variety and I want the, the, the river water to have a very slightly greenish sort of tinge. Um, it's a chalk river um, and you often see the chalk through um, the water and it gives it a really sort of a bit of a glow really. It's a beautiful place. It's one of my favourite places in the whole world. 
and now to build up some texture on that grassy bank um, the riverbank which we're going to have trees coming across from the top and that fence that just leads down into the water um, that's quite a distinctive feature of the landscape at Cookmere Haven. Um, it's a very wide river with lots of sort of meandering offshoots and little oxbow lakes, things like that. And it's used to graze sheep and cattle quite often. Um, but the fields flood and the field boundaries and fences often just lead off and disappear into the flooded fields or are sort of broken off and repaired and things like that. It's, it's quite an interesting landscape from that point of view. So now I've got my sort of rough brush strokes in to create the grassy textures. I can get a little bit of variety and shadow in using um, some light red um, Cotman light red just to introduce some sort of earthier tones to the grass and to begin to get some shadows in. I'm painting wet in wet now, sort of wet paint onto the wet paint that I sort of uh, built up with the grasses. The skies are all still slightly wet so where I'm putting the paint across the top of the bank there it will soften and diffuse. And next I shall add some shadows using some Payne's Grey and sort of feather it through underneath some of those sort of areas, of little grasses and reeds and things um, growing of the side of the riverbank um, using my three quarter inch flat brush. And that was another favorite brush of, of Ron Ranson's. He used it often for buildings and things like that. Um, Anything sort of man-made he often used the flat brush for. I find it really useful for water actually and for keeping a nice straight line where the plants and bank meets the water. So dropping in just shadows here and there, not too much but just enough to sort of build up some shape and some form in my riverbank. putting in the shadows with quite fine marks with the tips of the flat brush. And just before I leave it all to dry, I'm using my small calligraphy brush to put in some pale gray, so Payne's gray and light red, pale gray, um, just some trees. that I just want them to sort of, um, these branches just to blend in and diffuse and soften back a little bit in the slightly wet sky. Now Ron would use a rigger here but I like my small calligraphy brush and really the brushes that you use will be the ones that you prefer yourself from practice. There's nothing like a brush that you know really well for yourself and that will do the best job. Now Ron's favourite thing was to use the corner of an old credit card um, or his fingernail it was a trick, he called it, to scratch through the paint and to create these lovely marks uh, for grasses, sticks and twigs, trunks, uh, branches of the tree. So we're just adding a little bit of extra texture here by pulling through the paint and revealing the white paper underneath. Um, and I think it can be very, very effective. So now it's time just to leave it all to dry and then come back and finish off the painting. So it's all nice and dry. Um, I'm going to mix up some quite weak watery green from my cobalt blue and cadmium yellow and I'm going to run across these hills at the back for the South Downs keeping it nice and faint so I get plenty of recession because the river is very wide at this point here. Maybe a little bit of slightly darker paint to softly diffuse into the paint that's already there and I shall leave that. Maybe add some details to that a little bit later but that's, that, that'll do. 
Now using the flat brush again, um, the sort of thing that Ron Ranson used it for was, as I said, man-made objects. So I'm going to use the shape of the tips of the flat brush and Payne's Grey to put in this fence and gate that's just dropping down into the river. The flat brush is ideal for this because you get this lovely straight line so it kind of paints it for you. And all I'm doing is using nice rich tube consistency paint on the tips of the brush and following along my guidelines that I drew in at the beginning. I think it's worth mentioning at this point that um, when I first started watercolour painting back in uh, spring, I think it was 2018, um, I discovered Ron Ranson uh, very quickly um, and his method of painting and it was the Ron Ranson way that got me started with landscape painting, got me hooked really. And even though I've gone off in my own sort of direction um, to a certain extent, I think his principles still guide the way I paint, kind of the loose um, approach where you kind of try and create something and nothing and, and an impression of the scene in front of you quickly um, without fuss and without fiddling too much. Um, so I try to sort of stick to those principles as much as possible, um, no matter what kind of scene I paint. So now using the Payne's Grey with a bit of the light red into it, um, just getting in some of those tree trunks and tree branches. Sort of softening off a little bit at the base of the tree with a clean damp squirrel mop and then back to the branches again and you can see the shape of um, my branches are sort of echoed in the shape of my clouds or the direction of my clouds across the sky now this is deliberate because um, we're sort of facing south looking south here and um, being on the estuary on the south coast um, the wind blows up through um, the valley the Cookmere Valley um, constantly actually it's a very windy place and so the trees are always sort of bent over in that sort of direction by the wind um, as it comes and blows across the English Channel so I usually try and sort of get that directionality to the trees when I'm painting the trees which are mostly hawthorns and blackthorns um, along the edges of the Cookmere River. We often go and collect sloes there, it's a beautiful place. Now running the card through the paint again just to add a bit of variety and some paler branches. Just a few little grasses and sticks and twigs here and there. Something and nothing, just bedding in that gate a little bit more to the, to the river bank. And it's uh, quite a fast flowing river, so I'm, I'm not putting any reflections in. A little bit of um, green, slightly darker. Uh, wet on dry across the far hills, the South Downs, just to add a little bit of some sort of bushes and maybe hawthorns and bushes, um, sort of a tangle of undergrowth on the far bank. So it's just making a few final adjustments here and there to the foreground. And then finally, with a small Pro Art Ron Ranson Harky brush and some pale green, getting slightly darker as I go on, um, just sort of stippling in um, some leaves on the edge ends of the branches. Again, something and nothing, just building up just a small amount of an impression of the leaves. You can see the 
the sky between the gaps that I've left in the leaves, keeping that foliage covering like a, a, just a, a nice loose overlay. Going in with a squirrel mop now just to darken up the green here and there and dragging it over those branches. Then I can, if anything's a little bit too strong, I can just knock it back uh, with, a, with a tissue and, and just remove a little bit of the paint here and there. So I'm going to call that finished. Um, I feel it's, it's nice and loose and fresh. It's, say, my own painting from my, my own photograph, but done very much um, as a tribute to and in the style of the late, great Ron Ranson. So now that I've removed the tape, we can see it with a clean white border and I think it looks quite fresh. It, it really, really reminds me that I have got to get down to Cookmere Haven again soon. I haven't been there for a month or two, so I'm really looking forward to a trip down there to go and do some more painting and some sketching. Well, I hope that was helpful. Um, and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, um, as that really helps with my reach. And thank you so much to my lovely Patreon group who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.